Um, but first of all, thank you all to the organizers for doing this and very excited. This is, this is the uh, first Fast Stage design and happy to be presenting to you guys. So I really appreciate this opportunity here. Um, I'm very delighted to kick off the presentation today. Yesterday's uh, sessions were fantastic. Um, and so uh, my topic today is uh, increasing the human element in open source uh, software. Um, Aaron mentioned my name is Aparna Sandar. I'm a senior researcher at Open Search Project. Um, through this talk, you'll get to learn a little bit more about me. But to kick this off, as we had a booth yesterday in um, uh, Fast Backstage, and I was mentioning this to our developer advocate, uh, he said, You must say this. And he said, Start with this. So uh, he said, a user interface is like a joke. If you have to explain it, it's not that good. And that's the popular perception here. Uh, this is uh, from our developer advocate. He said, tell them I didn't make this up. It's a popular joke. He's Nate Boot. I have stickers for those of you who are interested uh, with Nate on it. So please uh, pick up some open search and uh, some Nate Boot stickers if you are uh, around after this. Jokes aside, want to start off, want to kick off this uh, particular talk with uh, the year of 1995. Um, it's a while from now, but around that time, um, I was a 17-year-old trying to figure out my career path. Um, I was in a particular social context where I said, all right, um, there were things that were changing, come from a traditional family of doctors and engineers. I uh, was very encouraged to do engineering, and that was a stage where Everyone wanted to do computer science, and so I got into the program. Uh, I lasted three months, uh, and I hit a point of crisis. Um, I was really confused. I was doing what everyone else was doing, and honestly, I felt a lack of purpose, a lack of meaning, and I said, all right, let me take a break. So at that time, this concept of a break here was not a thing when I grew up, uh, but I did take a break for a year, and that is going to be the rest of this presentation in terms of my journey and how I am where I am. And before we go there, I do have to tell you, I am an employee of AWS. They are the sponsor of Open Search Project. Um, um, open Search Project, Open Search itself is a community-driven Apache 2 licensed open source search and analytics suites. That's what we do uh, for software. Like we develop that particular software. Anything I say today, is my view and my view alone. I am not representing AWS and I'm not pre representing anyone else. So just want to put it out there. And going back to 1995. 1995 uh, was when, if you actually look up open source software, it's actually the inception of, you know, of this whole concept of open source. And Apache open source contributions and governance models were created around that year, the same year that I was going through my crisis. So we've come a long way in terms of open source journey. Most of you are familiar with it. Um, but some questions do still remain. Why does open source design fail so much? Why do we fail as designers? And this is not just my view. If you look up the literature on you know, open so uh, source design, there's a lot of failure points in terms of experiences, in terms of how people consume um, software and their experiences there. The first thing is we see that um, most of these projects are developer contributed. Most of these developers know what they're doing. They need a toolkit of engineering capabilities. They need a toolkit that they can put together for another end user. And when you look at um, you know, UX itself, and some of these topics came up yesterday itself, UX has a lot of potential to help that end user the really low code user who needs that assistance through an experience. Developers oftentimes can engineer this. They're not looking um, for that particular experience. Their experience is really very different from that low code end user. So that's the first thing. The second thing is that aesthetics is rather subjective. When you look at design, what you like and what I like are really different. That's one aspect of design. The other aspect of design is what is universal? What is the baseline? What is the status quo? What do we have to reach as a very minimum? So there are standards and there's a range within which we're working when we're thinking about design. The other thing is contributor. There's a lot of variations. Open search, for example, we have contributors from all over the planet. 
Our contributors come from various cultures, they speak various languages, they have different values in software contributions, and that is the co those are the core people that are working with our software. And finally, if you think about it, consumption of open source software can vary. It is based on multiple needs per se. So you see here that we have, uh, we're, we're kind of, um, we ourselves are going to kind of, uh, you know, we, we're looking at this kind of multiplicity of consumption models. Um, that image there that I put, I actually pulled it out from uh, BBC Earth. I really like that. It asks about what humans will look like in a million years. We're getting more bionic. We ourselves are getting more digital. I kind of like that because we ourselves are going to be machine-like. So how do we design for our evolu evolving self? So let's take, it a, take a look at open so uh, UX in open source itself. Um, today, when we think about designers in open source, um, designers um, kind of, they're talented. They're really talented in UI, UI design. They understand principles of UI designs. They are skilled with presenting, uh, presenting any kind of design, design preferences, um, interface uh, preferences. Um, designers are also very skilled in bringing together, or at least um, our expectations of them, are to workshop and to bring diverse aspects of the trio teams together, the developer team, the PM team, the design team, and all these things together. But when I talk to people, and especially designers in the UX field, who have worked for um, you know, uh, products that utilize open source, they will say um, UX is such a novel new d discipline. To me, it's not. Design is as old as civilization itself. That image there of um, Goebbelki uh, Tepe, it's kind of his, it dates back to 9,500 uh, BC. It's around 11,500 years old. Um, that is when we as a species have been designing experiences for the masses. So design in, in and of itself predates any of um, software, open source, all those things. So if design is intuitive to us, and if design has this long tradition, and we are moving towards a more um, digitally integrated future, then what does it mean to be human versus digital? We are going towards this world that is more unifying. So from a developer perspective, um, we try to simplify things that are complex. Of what we understand from a developer perspective, um, what humans experience as empathetic, we codify as ideal, when humans understand as multiplicity, we govern as singular, and what you think of the everyday, developers justify as the elevated. So when you think about it, all that entropy, all that messiness, all that chaos, they kind of monetized as a curated experience for our customers. Um, this is, when you think about what it is to be human, we have a definition of what humans are by Sophie. And so this is Sophie, who is um, the Smithsonian Institute kind of features her. She defines, it's, it's the closest we are to um, you know, artificial intelligence mimicking humans. And she defines what it is um, to be human. Uh, the whole uh, campaign is called Being Human. Um, they, have a, they say, you know, our human story is remarkable. It's the greatest story ever told. And while it is a story of astonishing developments for our species, it's also the tale of billions of individual lives echoing down the millennia, all of them full of hope and promise, fear and disappointment. To be human is to be at the center of our own universe, to experience life and all its colors and all its potentials. This is what we want to celebrate with the Being Human campaign. So this is um, uh, the quest to, to be human always remains. It'll always exist. But then what does it mean to design for open source software? Well, the first thing, uh, am I loud enough? <laughs> My echo is stopped, but hopefully you guys can hear me. I'm pretty loud, I know that. Um, so all right, so when we think about designing well, designing well is to prioritize that human experience. It means that uh, rather, you know, we design both for the collective and the individual. We take into account different aspects of branding. We design kind of um, we're strong individuals versus uh, community preferences, especially when it comes to contributing to open source, and also the keeping the user at the center and addressing decisions with sciences. 
So remember, I noted the social changes in 1995. It seems to be a recurring theme as I've gone through my career. Um, at that point, I mentioned, I was trying to decide what I would do after my break year. I went and became a designer. I practiced design for over a decade in Austin, Texas, and in Cincinnati. And at some point, I um, you know, branched my career into uh, branding, went into marketing, was a marketing professor and academic. Um, I became a cognitive scientist. I do have a PhD in cognitive science. And I taught um, for a decade before I stumbled into my current Amazonian journey. So I am part of Open Search Project. I do help them understand, bring that human perspective into some of our decisions in products and software. So over that time, as I have uh, gone through my career, we've seen some revolutions in our technologies. These are step change, societal variations that we're seeing from software. We started cloud technologies that brought in and of itself a different way in which users navigate the world. I then, right now, we're all in this. We're all through this AI evolution. And as we are looking at what we're going to do, how are we going to define this, are we going to define this, or are we going to have a proper struggle with someone else who gets to design it and probably not even human. So we're kind of in that place right now. I'm happy to say I do have twin boys. Um, they're 18, and they are making career choices right now. And it's fascinating to see how they are kind of exploring this particular place in their decisions. So one thing to think about is what is important through all these technological shifts. So the main point I want to make here is to transform software um, that focuses on code to software that empowers humans. We need to start with the user. And when I talk about user, I'm talking about a deep engagement and understanding of that user. Traditionally, when we think about research, this discipline has also got its own tradition and is quite old. Uh, but if you think about research in and of itself, we're looking at research into the community that prioritizes software requirements. We're talking about systematic inquiry, um, scientific research investigations, whether you're talking about journalism, things like that, um, open source intelligence investigations by nonprofit en entities and more. So essentially, we do want open source. Uh, when you think about what open source is all about, we engage individuals in the community. So um, it seems really simple, but how to bring the practice of research um, in open source? Um, there are some challenges here. When you think about how designers design, designers love their designs. They're really attached. They really know that this is coming from a good place. It's coming from a good discipline. They love their designs. Um, our product managers, they love their product, they love to monetize from it, they love their product. Our community managers and our open source, open source community managers are here, I love them, they love the community. But what is at the end of this? The only thing that really matters is that end user. Is your end user having a good experience? So let's take a look at what I've been doing with the open source product this far. So I mapped this out to kind of walk through. There's a lot of nuances in how we're bringing that science to how we develop software. If you think about the product life cycle, right? You're thinking about the initial stages of product, kind of like you put your PRFQ out, you put your requirements out, and then you go into a process where you're ideating and you're developing solutions. And then you look into how are our customers, how are our users using it, what are points of frustration, what are pain points, what's working, what's not. So that's kind of the product life cycle. And if you look at it, research works hand in hand at each one of these different stages. We have the discovery stage at the onset of saying, OK, we have all these features and functionalities. We are going to um, you know, uh, create these features and functionalities, these engineering capabilities. But then we go into this process of ideation and then evaluation. Hopefully, at the end of it, we are creating meaningful user experiences here. So let me explain each one of these. At the discovery stage, um, a lot of you are familiar with contextual inquiries. And so a lot of contextual inquiries there defining the who, defining the jobs that need to be done defining the exact experience, so on and so forth. Um, that GIF that you're looking right there, um, we've done, uh, we've, we are in the process of developing templates for our community to use uh, as personas and their jobs to be done based on the research and contextual inquiry. If you follow us either on GitHub or look us up on Figma, this is an open source kind of, this is something that you can download and use these templates for your particular use. Um, 
Then we're talking about rapid prototyping. Our designers do and our product developers do um, create um, designs and they do put it up on GitHub. Um, that first repo you're seeing out there is our open search repo. <laughs> Chris here manages that. Uh, there's a lots of researchers there, so you can uh, follow us that and see how we kind of put some of these up. We do have community meetings every two, twice, uh, twice a month. We have community meetings, so we'll go, we'll talk to our community, we'll show them, we'll demo what we're doing, and we get feedback from them. We also have an open search design repo where some of the UX, especially the curated experiences, are out there. And I think this is... Are you guys able to hear me? All right, cool. All right, cool. Thank you. Okay, so, so we do have our design repo as well. And the project has been very supportive. And we have started an open search research repo, which I'm hoping will engage more with the same audience that we are trying to uh, contribute to. And hopefully, we'll put some of our ongoing projects there and then the projects that we also want to get and engage our community as well. All right, um, so that's kind of the ongoing stuff, things like card sorting, tree testing. This is a fantastic avenue to do that as well. And then the evaluative part of it. We, um, we used to do this quarterly, biannually. We'll get feedback from our community through various channels. Uh, we populate that feedback right now. We have ways in which we think about our users, some of them really high code, some of them not like more low code, and they have curated experiences. I do try and define experiences, even if it is developers for whom we have not yet created a curated UX, because this is a precursor to justifying creating UX. So for a good example of this is infras or admin users. They usually can navigate pretty much well themselves, but they too have frustrations, and these are opportunities to give them resources, documentations, how-tos, and things like that that we can actually curate as well. So that's kind of our evaluative. Um, we have a pretty large uh, code base. Open Search has a pretty large uh, um, code base, so keeping track of our users and community input at each of these uh, product improvement stages are really important. So in addition, we engage in larger studies. This is where marketing has been a great partner with us because they have a good idea of our community. They talk to our community in the booths, in all our conferences, but we do try and get a pulse of our community and try and get a good sense of segmentation, what we should prioritize in our different functionalities like search or analytics, things like that. So segmentation studies are some things that we work on. Uh, kind of it gives us specific requirements, how to think about a specific use base, so on and so forth. Um, our developer team does track um, some of the metrics on GitHub, but they are not insights-based. So right now we're working on a project trying to bring those user insights by those developers where they exist. So we're really trying to speak the language of where our community is. Um, we, you know, systematically do uh, very in a very regular cadence the usability accessibility studies. The just your baseline. That's kind of like um, best practice every year. Gives us a sense of where we are in terms of some of our curated experiences as well. And then I mentioned that GitHub earlier. That's something that we're working on in terms of getting getting there. So when you're thinking about moving from feature focused to user centered. Um, when we're very, we um, kind of emphasize on um, UX as this, you know, just adding to the engineering with some UX mocks. Uh, we think about, uh, you know, offering a toolkit with feature first and then functionality over experience. When you flip that on the head and start with your user first, emphasizing that user, the human experience, um, you think about the baseline with accessibility and uh, some of the usability. This diff kind of is one of our accessibility, um, a usability study that our user is actually working through, one of the experiences there. Uh, we prioritize experience first and then also helps us define experience, defines the functionality. When you think about stages of UX maturity, now that you have a toolkit, you're working on how to um, kind of make that more experience-based. So um, to summarize here, open source research is a cornerstone of open source design. It's easy and powerful. Designers are able to set the foundation for curated experiences. It gives consensus to development of open source, focused on the lowest common denominator, and it is based on tr tried and true uh, kind of testimony. So um, given that design is such a you know, pretty robust traditional discipline, bringing um, a kind of uh, 
it kind of brings us, um, it kind of um, brings, uh, you know, brings that specialty, brings that experience to the field in software. All right, and then um, call to action. Designers do start, uh, kind of keep the user at the center of development for open source software. Start with small ongoing ideation groups, focus on user journeys, um, and at the actual real user and uh, research, um, trying to kind of de-bias your team's um, prior conceptions, prioritize data and di the discovery process, and start with the baseline to enable the lowest common denomination, but then empower those dreamers who want to really develop those um, elevated experiences as well. All right, with that, really want to appreciate your time here. Some of the references I have cited are here on the slides. And then Chris, our community manager, has put up the slides on our GitHub. So if you guys want a copy of the slides, you can go there. I think the organizers here too have this in, uh, will have this in some fashion for anyone who needs it. Um, I do blog regularly on some of these topics on the research and the design research that I do for um, Open Search. So if you want to look us up, opensearch.org is our website. And um, yeah, if you have any questions, happy to take that now, uh, either now or after the session. Can we, yeah, applause, awesome. Thank you so much. It's amazing to hear about open repositories for research. There's some people in Taiwan doing some work on that if you haven't heard of it as well, it's really cool. Um, so, uh, while we wait for questions, so think of your questions. If you have questions, if you could raise your hand and I'll come around with the mic. Oh, amazing, we've got one already. If I could invite you to write a word. I did. Oh, you did? I did you went with human? I, I, yeah, yeah. So, That's mine. Okay, cool. Yeah. We'll, we'll do that for the All second right, speaker then. Uh, so we've got one question here. Okay, thank you. Your research repository, is this open or is it just inside of OpenSearch and uh, kept away from the public? So everything that we have on GitHub is open. My, my repository is public. There's nothing to look up right now, only because it's not yet developed. Uh, I, I gave you a background of my, my background is design and then research. I'm becoming bionic myself. So I'm uh, going to start curating and adding a lot more in the next few months. Um, but right now our repository, open search is open. The UX is open. Uh, you will start seeing stuff on research through this year. Yeah. Any more questions, folks? We've got time. If folks have questions. If not, oh. okay, cool. Uh, I don't think there's any more questions. Maybe some some later when you're having coffee. All right. um, but yes, uh, if we can do another round of applause. Okay, great. Thank you. Thank you.